Hello, today I'm going to give a quick tutorial on how you can import your own clothing and hair items into Xandra and Character Creator. Um, so I've included a couple of scenes in the ArtStation download section. Um, one of them is for the female base body with the rig and the other ones for the male base body. So um, please go ahead and open whichever one of those um, bases you want to start with. Uh, then you want to import your own clothing and hair items. If you want to uh, import like OBJs or FBXs of your files, just make sure you use the file import window here. If your clothing is not modeled to fit the character, one of the best ways to fit it to the body shape is to go into sculpt mode, um, click on the move brush, and you can just move the clothing around with um, small small brush strokes like this um, to fit it to the body. Uh, once you've done that and it looks like it's fitting correctly, um, what we want to do is add the body shapes to this item of clothing. Um, if you click on the body shapes asset here, so if I dial in these sliders, you can see how these are changing the um, shapes and size of the body. And we need to add these into the clothing, otherwise the body is going to move without the clothes. So you're going to need a plugin to do this. So it's a free plugin, you can get it from Gumroad Mesh Data Transfer for Blender. Download this zip file and then the way that you install it is you go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons. So this menu here and then when you click install um, you just have to click on the zip file which you download from that website. So once you've installed that plugin um, if you click on an object in the scene and you scroll down on the right hand panel here under this um, triangle window um, you'll see that there's now a drop down called mesh data transfer and what you have to do here is click on world on the left here, closest, and then you want to click the eyedropper tool and click on this body shapes asset. And then what we're going to do is transfer the shape keys. And what you'll notice is that all of the shape keys from that asset come up over here. And now if you um, drag on any of these, you'll see that it's doing the same thing as the body shapes geometry would. And now I'm going to um, weight paint the item of clothing. So for the weight painting process what you need to do is click on your clothing item, hold control, click on the skeleton, press control P and see where it says armor should deform, click with empty groups. That's going to um, add the armature to your clothing but it's not going to add any weight painting to this clothing item yet. And the reason for that is because we want to take the weight painting from this body shapes item. So I'm going to click on the body shapes next and then I'm going to hold control and click on and then I'm going to hold control and click on this torso so I'm going to click on the body shapes next then I'm going to hold control and click on the torso clothing I'll go to weight paint and um, make sure that it's in that order so make sure that you click on the body shapes object first and then the torso the item of clothing should be the part that shows up in blue. Then we want to go transfer weights and um, a panel is going to come up on the left here. Make sure that you choose these settings. So what you want to do is go nearest face interpolated, turn off create data, make the ray radius one meter and source layer selected choose by name. So what this is going to do is 
transfer all the weights to that clothing object um, based on the name of the bone because they're both rigged to the same skeleton so that's why that works all right now you can try rotating your skeleton to see how it looks it should be sticking to the clothing if not you might need to refollow some of the steps um, or you can always reach out to me via message for help if you need it Um, and if, if you've got like a really complex object, like a jacket that has, or, or maybe like some armor or something like that, and you need to apply additional weight painting, um, you can easily do that with the weight paint menu. Uh, I recommend selecting the skeleton first, then selecting your clothing, going into the weight paint menu, because then you can click on control, like you can hold down control and click on any of the bones and um, you can swap which part you're weight painting that way. Um, I recommend adjusting the weight paints as little as possible to get the good results because you, the more you adjust the weight paint, the more likelihood there is of the things like that. Sometimes um, you need to clean it up a little bit, but try not to do like a lot of weight painting overall. Now that that's in, we can add in the sections of the body that are going to make this a modular asset um, so that there'll be no seams when we're connecting it with the rest of the character in the creator. So that we've got here, it doesn't, like, this top doesn't go all the way down to the wrist and it doesn't cover the bottom part of the stomach, which is where, like, if I isolate both of these two, you can see the size of the torso modular asset. So anything that's showing on this torso asset is something that would um, just show up as like blank or invisible if we didn't add that part of the skin into this item. Uh, so what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to press shift D to duplicate the torso item and just hide the other one. Then I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to start cutting out parts of the torso that are visible. I'm just going to have a look at like where the seams are for this and how much of it I can see. So I think that I'll probably leave all the way up to the neck there because you can see quite a lot of that but I'll go around under the arm like this, around the back and just this way as well and I'm going to mark this as a seam and then I saw that there's some of the stomach is showing here as well. So I'm going to just mark a seam around here. And then I'm going to um, face select and you can click on a face and press control L to select a whole section. If it doesn't happen this way, you need to expand this window on the left here and make sure it's um, this delimit menu is not selecting normal, uh, you're selecting seam here because then this is going to only select within the boundaries of the seams that you've just defined. I'm going to click delete faces and then I'm probably just going to delete this part of the back as well because you're not going to see it. Something like this. So I think that looks good for this asset. So now what I'm going to do is click on that skin um, I'll hold control and I'll click on this torso item um, and actually before I join them one thing that's really important in Blender for maintaining the materials is before you join two items both of the UV maps have to be named exactly the same otherwise it's going to create a new UV channel so if you're creating clothing and um, you see here that this is named anything other than UV map. You need to change it to UV map with the same capitalization and everything. So if I look at the torso, you can see this is called UV map and um, the clothing item which you're making needs to be called exactly the same thing. So just double check that before you combine the items. Yep, hold control, click on both of them and then just press control J to join these together. 
Okay, so the next step is to export this to Unreal Engine. Um, you'll notice that the skeleton in here is already at this scale right here, 0.01. That's important um, so that it comes in correctly to Unreal Engine. So you need to click on the clothing object that you want to export and then hold control and click on the skeleton as well. Uh, so you have to have them both selected. Then we'll export FBX. What you want to do is limit to selected objects. Uh, we'll choose armature type, uh, we'll choose object types armature and mesh. The transform scale should be 1, forward should be negative z forward, and up should be y up. You want to apply unit and use space transform as well. In geometry, I'm going to apply modifiers here, and in armature, the primary bone axis is y, secondary bone axis is x, and I am definitely unselecting, and I'm definitely deselecting add leaf bones. You don't want to add leaf bones, definitely not. That option is really important because if you add leaf bones, you're always going to be adding extra bones to your rig. Um, I turn off bake animation, we're not exporting any animation, and then I'm just going to export FBX after I name the item. And I'm going to open the character creator scene. So I think this is a modern item, so I'm going to navigate to um, characters F2 modern models, and I'm just going to put it in here. Uh, you can make your own folder if you want for all of your own assets. It doesn't really matter in the folder structure how you organize it. I'm going to drag and drop my new asset in here now, and then there's also going to be some import settings, which are going to be really important. So, um, skeletal mesh, yes. This should be true. Import mesh should be true as well. Change the skeleton to scale UE4 mannequin. Make sure that import morph targets right here is ticked. In the normal import method, make sure that this is import normal. Um, you want to deselect use T0 as ref pose. This should be un unticked. Next, create physics asset should be off. Um, and the physics asset here should be phys UE4 mannequin. If you can't see these options, they might be um, nested like this. There's a little drop down here which you can click to show advanced, and that's where these um, are listed. When we scroll down, we want to make sure that import animations are deselected. For materials, search location, do not search, material import method, do not create material, and turn import textures off. And that's about it, so I'll import that. And now, it's my new torso, my new torso is right here. So I'm going to double click on this, and you'll see that currently there are no materials assigned. So I'm going to assign the body material straight away. You can search for body and what you're looking for is MI skin F body A. Or if it's a if there's any nudity, then you would use this one here, MI skin F body nude. I'll save that. And then um, I need to create a material for the clothing. So if you're creating your own clothing, um, I'm assuming that you probably have your own textures that you want to use for it. And you can use your own materials and everything, that's um, perfectly fine. But if you want to copy the setup for my materials, just go into any existing clothing materials and you can duplicate one of these. We can open this up and then you can see what kind of maps are used here. So you've got a diffuse, um, a normal map, and then an ORM map. So an ORM map is there's an ambient occlusion map in the R channel, that's the red channel, 
their individual map like you've got an ambient occlusion map you've got a roughness map and you've got a metallic map in photoshop what you would do is go into the ch the lay like the channels menu um so right here see like like this so when you open up the channels menu you got rgb so uh, what i'm saying is that your ambient occlusion has to be pasted into the red channel your roughness has to be pasted into the green channel and then the metallic has to be painted into the blue channel and um, you don't need an alpha channel. So then when you export that, that's what will create an ORM map. Um, yeah, so you can just select the right textures in here. Um, the last thing to keep in mind is that this tea cloth mask um, this is what is controlling the color changing for the clothing. So in all of the clothing, there's three different colors that you can select. That's controlled by a mask, which is um, masking off areas of pure red, green, and blue values. So um, if you want to, you can uh, just export this map, or you can take a screenshot or a snip, and then you can um, use these colors in Photoshop or Substance Painter. You can mask out areas where you want them to be different colors. And this is the colors which I'm talking about controlling. So you've got cloth color A, cloth color B, cloth color C, and these three cloth color colors are connected. Color A is like the red channel, color B is the green channel, and color C is the blue channel. So now once all of that is done and you actually want to add the item into the character creator, click on the character creator menu, go to wardrobe items, and open up wardrobe default. You can click on your torso meshes and that will bring up a database of all of the torso items which are in the character creator. You just want to duplicate one of these and um, rename it to what you want it to be called. So this name here is the row name and this name here is the display name. Make sure that every item has a unique display name, otherwise um, it can cause an issue with um, the correct model not showing. So give each item a, a unique row name and display name. The display name is, what, is what's going to show up on the UI when you're running the character creator. Then I'm going to put the new torso item that I've made into the mesh object here. Where it says available for these body types, I'm going to select female since this item is just for the female body type. I'll click save and then close this window. Now I can play the character creator and go into the outfit menu. Scroll down and my new torso item is available here. And I can switch to that new item of clothing. Because we added the body shapes in, I can also control the body blend shapes through the menu here. So that's how you can add your own clothing to Xandra Character Creator. I hope that helped. Um, and please let me know if you have any questions. Bye.